Hello, Oweri. Good morning. Good morning. SM Fest. SM Fest. Okay, um, I'm going to try to make it very quick. I heard that I have just um, 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to deliver as much as I can in 15 minutes. Uh, how many people own small businesses here, small or micro businesses? If you own one, oh, okay, excellent, because this is going to be targeted at small businesses. Um, I'm an SMB person, so my content usually is still on towards small businesses. Okay, so uh, there, has, there has been about, we've had about four um, evolution of business cycles in the world. The first was the agricultural age where um, the entire world was building wealth from agricultural enterprises. And this was the time when slavery they took our forefathers as slaves because uh, they believed that blacks could work harder. So they would transport our forefathers from Africa all the way to America and Europe to work in slave plantations. And African sweat helped build some of the great, world's greatest plantations in Europe and America. And then it got to a point where it was clear that value could no longer be sustained. Wealth could no longer be sustained from plantations. So there was the need to convert, to add value to the produce in agriculture. And then, and then we emerge into the industrial age. The industrial age was when they simply took a lot of the things from agriculture or from natural resources and began to produce. And then the world again started building wealth from production. And if you were not producing, you would have lost a significant opportunity at that time to tap into wealth. And that was when you had people um, coming up with all sort of um, inventions around production. You know, they started producing air conditioners, started producing um, airplanes, a lot of things in the world that we know it as of today uh, started off in that age. And then we moved later on to the information age, selling, buying and selling of information, right? Um, that's why today you see that some of the world's biggest organizations are just information providers. If you look at Facebook, for example, Facebook today is the world's largest media company, and they do not publish one material. They do not have a TV station. They don't produce anything. They just aggregate the data, right? Um, you have Netflix. Netflix has, Netflix does not, uh, uh, Netflix is the world's biggest entertainment provider in terms of digital uh, 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 TV content. But, I mean, they do not have any physical store. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share a, a, a case study with you. In the early 2000s, when Netflix was founded, the guy approached the CEO of Blockbuster. He wanted to sell to Blockbuster, right? As I then, See your Blockbuster worked him out that this is a stupid idea. About 10 years down the line, Blockbuster went under. And what do you have today? You have Netflix, what billions of USD, and providing millions and millions of content. This age that we are in now is what we call the experience age. It's the digital age. What does it do? It again adds value to the information age and expects you to leave the digital culture. Now, digital adoption or technology adoption is different from digital culture. A lot of us believe that once we have digital skills, we can use the laptop, we use the printer, we use Microsoft application, then we automatically are digitally acculturated, but that's not the case. Digital culture is your ability to think in a digital way. So you are into a Greek, for example, or you sell food. If you're going to think digital, you have to think Number one, how can I leverage digital culture? How can I leverage technology to optimize this thing that I'm doing and build wealth? Now, there's a concept called design thinking. Design thinking is about how you can be empathetic in that thing that you are doing. So if you own a cleaning business, for example, right? There are so many people that own cleaning businesses. But if you are going to create wealth from your, cleaning, your small cleaning business, 
You think about how can I adopt technology to this? And then how can I think about this cleaning that I'm doing from a problem-solving perspective? Now, how do they build money? How do they raise a lot of funds in technology? Simple. They apply design thinking. I'm a cleaner. What is the problem, social problem that I'm trying to solve? There's a huge cleaning problem in Nigeria. There's a huge waste problem. There's a huge unhealthy problem. And there are sustainable development goals that aim to support or move the world from into a sustainable age, right? Now, you, you, you are into cleaning business, and then instead of saying, oh, I, I, I want to make money from cleaning, please uh, 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 come and patronize me, you say the world is Africa or West Africa or Oweri is, is, is suffering from serious environmental degradation. My cleaning business is aimed at supporting Oweri to move towards healthy and sustainable living, one household at a time. That's a different narrative, right? So you still want to make money, but you want to solve problems. If you sell and propose your service in that way, and then you back it up with technology, you, I can assure you, you are going to connect with the right audience, and you are going to be able to build wealth. You are going to change your narrative. That's exactly what everybody does. Look, if you look at everybody that does fintech today, almost all the guys in fintech space are just doing what already existed. Look at Piggyvex, for example. Piggyvex is just solving a problem using technology that already existed. Before now, people would put money in Colo, right? And then they thought in their minds, let's digitize this thing. And then they came up with Piggy Bank NG. And then they said they want to solve the saving problem in the world, in Nigeria, right? One person at a time. Today they have over 3 million users and they, they, they raise a lot of capital. The same thing, there are clean tech companies that have raised hundreds of thousands of US dollars. It's not as if there are no cleaning businesses. It's about how you change the narrative of what you do. The same thing if you are an, if you are an education consultant or you are a teacher or you are an education enthusiast. Think about what problems. There is a lot of, 10 million of Nigerian kids are out of school. You want to solve education problems, then you adapt technology to it. Then you begin to have conversations around how can I raise capital, how can I reach more people, right? That is how to keep your business small, but then you get big results. Because with technology, you are able to reach more people. As a matter of fact, regulation in Nigeria struggles to meet up with technology. And I'll give you an example. Look at banking, for example, or CBN. CBN still regulates based on physical locations. They will give you unit license for a microfinance bank and say, oh, you must not go beyond the local government. But then, once you adapt technology, what happens? You get a unit license, and then you reach everybody across Africa. That is having a small business, but getting big results using technology. Are you following me? Now. There are so many things that you can do. I already spoke about design thinking. Strategic partnerships is very critical. Look at your circle of friends. How many of them have skills that you do not have that can complement you? There is no point owning 100% 100 of 100 Naira when you can own 50% of 200 or 300, right? If you are able to form strategic alliances, you are in this event today, make sure you meet at least 20 people 20 people that you can complement you in that thing that you are passionate about, and you build alliances, and then your alliances become formidable, and you build wealth, and then you create value that is sustainable for yourself and those that are coming behind you. I mean, I already spoke about digital transformation. I already spoke about social media. Please learn how to use social media to position yourself for opportunities and growth. Digital media can either make or mar you. It all depends on the channel that you, the energy or the positivity or negativity that you choose to take out of it, right? Now, again, there are no skills that cannot be learned or acquired through strategic partnerships. Think about digital, think about empathy and design thinking, think about impact, think about partnerships, and think about creating value and you are going to grow your small business with big results in no time. Thank you.